Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 93. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega Series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. All right, so we are here now for the German racing car showdown. We're going to be taking a BMW M3 GTR. We're going to be taking the Need for Speed car. For anyone who doesn't know, this is literally the Need for Speed car. Uh, we're going to be starting off with Laguna Seca, Circuit de Catalunya, Sebring, Maple Valley, Road Atlanta, and then New York Circuit. Let's get going. Do you know what else really irritates me about iPhone as well? Um, and the internet and shit like that. So iPhone... Ooh, Jesus Christ, that thing was slow iPhone have put a huge emphasis on privacy, um, advertising about how they take privacy seriously and stuff like that um, on devices. And again, this is something that Android won't advertise because they're not going to lie. Um, one of the big things that annoys me is Apple will quite easily hand over your data, even though it's private. Like, it might... They might have... Fucking hell. They might have things that stop websites tracking you straight up. Um, and getting data that way. But Apple still keeps track of that data that they're requesting. And keeps hold of that information. So even though it might not be going to, say, Facebook or whatnot. Directly, that data still goes to Apple. Um, and Apple will hand that data over to law enforcement and whatnot at the push of a button. So this whole, even though it makes sense why they do it, this whole advertising campaign of your privacy is your own, under your control. No, it's not. Like, the privacy that Apple has is just so that they have your data. And no one else can have it and whatnot. Which isn't even true to that point because companies like Facebook can still get data through other ways like by using their apps they already have your IP address so they can make the assumption oh this device lives at this address let's show them adverts of the nearby area and stuff like that oh look there's a device here on this same network that likes to search this stuff. Hang on, let's give them these adverts. You know, it makes so many assumptions, which is obviously like realistic to life. Like the assumption of, oh, well, there's two devices in this household that use the same Facebook account that search up the same things. Hmm, maybe this is the same person. You know, they can still get the data through other means and that's the thing, like, you use the internet, your data's everywhere. As soon as you're on the internet. It's just the modern world. It's just how it is. So people that absolutely brick themselves and are like, Oh, I must buy an iPhone because they've got this privacy... No. You're on the internet. <laughs> your data's out there anyways, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, I don't bother with, like... The, the people that are like, I don't want a Facebook account when I use my Oculus because I don't want Facebook having all my data. Well, newsflash, every other website you've ever been to has your data. <laughs> like, it's just... You know, it's the world. Thank you. 
Why did my thing just say connect into chat? Is my chat broken? Chat, someone type in chat. <laughs> I need to see a message. But uh, yeah, it's um, it's a really weird. That's why I I don't like it. Real. <laughs> it's a, a very weird noise. Um, that's why I hate it when tech companies try and like promote stuff because. When it comes to tech, without tooting my own horn, I'm a lot more knowledgeable than a lot of people that this tech is aimed at. Like when you think an iPhone has become a very necessary product for everyone, but people who are absolutely clueless about technology will still buy an iPhone because they need a phone for like their life. To call people, to contact people. And like the people who are less knowledgeable about technology will just trust Apple and say, oh look, my stuff is private and all that. No, it's not. That's not how like, privacy on the internet does not work like that. Like, if there's something you do not want of yourself on the internet, do not do it. It's as simple as that. Like, for example, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to think of an example. Um, cheating on someone, for example. Like, if you're talking to two people in DMs or whatnot, cheating on your missus, don't do it on the internet. That's just a fucking dumb idea. <laughs> like, nothing is private on the internet. that you can play Gran Turismo on Android is mind-blowing. It is, in a way, to be honest. Because um, you can get... Uh, is it PPSSPP? The PSP emulator? If you run that with a modified PS1 game... Sony obviously modified the games by changing how they run and how they boot so that they could run on a PSP. But if you do that yourself and modify the Gran Turismo file so that it um, can run on the PSP, you can actually um, run some pretty decent games on Android. Like, Gran Turismo 2 is a weird one. Gran Turismo 2 hates being emulated. Like, no matter how much I try figuring out how to emulate it on something, either a computer, whatnot, Gran Turismo 2 hates it with a passion. I think that's kind of the joy of iPhone, though. The fact that you have no customization and no advanced stuff, like... iPhone is very closed off. It's very basic. So if you have a more minimal knowledge of how to use phones, it is the perfect phone. And even me personally, I have the knowledge of phones, but I prefer Apple's operating system. Like, because it is just basic. And when it comes to using a phone, I'm mostly just using it for social media and... Just scrolling through TikTok or YouTube, watching YouTube videos, watching movies, making phone calls, text messages, you know, the basic stuff that a phone does now. I'm not into gaming, I'm not into the advanced stuff, I'm not into programming at the moment. That's not necessary for me. I obviously would like more customization out of an iPhone, but if that's a price I have to pay to have a more simple experience fuck it i'll have an iphone tomorrow the only problem i do have with iphone is because it's so closed off i cannot use it 
for like transferring files. If I'm working on something on my phone, I cannot transfer it to um, a PC without having to use cloud or going through different loopholes to try and get it. It's just stupid. That's the one thing that I don't like about iPhones. If they... Why the fuck are the cameras so expensive? Like, just buy a regular camera if you want one. Uh, because... The cameras aren't actually that expensive. All the cameras in an iPhone, and even in Androids, I believe now, pretty much are all the same sensor. It's... Sony do, like, a bunch of sensors at a time. And... I believe Sony's big one at the moment is the 64 megapixel. That's like their mid-range one. So a lot of Android phones are coming out with 64 megapixel cameras. And obviously they all have the exact same sensor. My um, Galaxy phone has a 64 megapixel camera. Which is what a lot of flagships came out with. Like a year ago. It's the same sensor. They're all done by Sony now. Which is good, because Sony is, like, fucking amazing at making cameras. But they are all pretty much all Sony sensors. Um, one thing I would say, though. Um, Samsung does have better AI. So their pictures look a little better than iPhones. But, like, I understand why cameras need to be good in phones. Because when it comes to life having a phone that has a camera that you can capture moments that happen in life it makes sense nobody is going to be walking around in life going for a night out with a fucking DSLR camera are they so it makes sense why phones have good cameras but only flagships should have those good cameras which is what they do like you if you want a really expensive phone that has can be really good at everything it does flagship otherwise you can go for a cheaper model well yeah but it depends if people in life capture what they do in their life you know most people do that and you've got to think a, a phone is catered towards the masses not the minor that's not the right word <laughs> That's not the right word. The um It's catered towards the masses not individuals. We'll go with that word in. The other one was gonna sound really bad. <laughs> Could have been clipped away out of context. <laughs> but yeah. I'm gonna have to continue this story in a minute. <laughs> But yeah, when it comes to, like, um... I just think iPhone is better. There we go, we got three discounts there. Yeah, I think I, I, think I went on off a tangent. Um, but yeah, I really like iPhone's OS a lot more than Android's. For the sole reason that it is more simple. And I prefer, when it comes to using a phone that is just more simple and it just does the job I want it to. However... Android is a much more complex operating system. It's it's not that much more complex if you're just using it as, like I was saying before, just your basic stuff. It's not anything more advanced. But what it does offer is that more advanced options to basically make the phone work the way exactly you want it to. And there are some settings I cannot remember because I haven't had an iPhone for so long. But when it came to like using an iPhone, um, the one that pissed me off about iPhones before was Apple Pay was an absolute bitch when I used to have it. Um, and trying to like load up Apple Pay when Apple Pay first became like a thing was so annoying. And just the way that it is now on Android, with like Google Wallet, you can just have everything in your wallet and that. Because again, Apple Pay used to be like Apple Pay, now it's Apple Wallet. Google's done the same, it used to be Google Pay, now it's Google Wallet. 
the wallet apps for both phones are like identical now so that's not really a point I can make anymore but uh, when it comes to like if I want customizability settings for like dark mode Android has like seven different settings um, for like different dark mode things what the fuck okay cheers game <laughs> Yeah, so, and my Android phone has, at the moment, it's got blue light filter for, like, your nighttime. It's got dark mode. It's got adaptive screen mode, which basically does similar to what the blue light filter does, but also adds, like, warmth to the screen, and that's an automated thing. It's also got bedtime mode, which turns the screen grayscale. Um, there's a couple other options as well, which for someone who doesn't understand the phone, yes, yeah, sure, that might be complicated, but those things don't need to be turned on, so it doesn't really affect the thingy, the, like, act how you use the operating system. However, it does give you so much more control over how your phone works, so that's a really good point, whereas iPhone, I think, just has dark mode and blue light filter I think so but dark mode and blue light filter is pretty much all you need for um, an actual iPhone and again like I'm all for the simplicity of iPhone but when the simplicity of iPhone makes it impossible to transfer files, whereas the slight added complexity of Android makes transferring files an absolute breeze. I'm going for Android any day of the week. I think next, um, I've got a contract renewal for my data plan coming up in January. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to be doing then. when that comes comes around but I may Ooh. might be getting an S22 because I'm hoping the price of the Samsung S22 Ultra comes down as it gets closer to the S23 reveal. Because I think Samsung does like two events. They release like their fold lineup and their flip lineup at the same time, sort of later in the year. But earlier in the year, they release their S Galaxy lineup and the higher end of their A lineup, I believe. I don't know whether it's the higher end or the lower end of the A lineup that comes out. But the S22, 23 sh probably will release early on next year, like February, March, April time. So I'm hoping I can get myself a nice cheaper S22. I'll be able to have a flagship of my own and be very happy, very happy man. Oh yeah, th that's another thing that really annoys me with iPhone. So Apple, um, as of... I want to say as of December 2023, every single mobile phone is going to have to use USB Type-C in Europe. Um, now, out of all the phones that exist... Pretty much everyone already uses Type-C except Apple. So people think, oh, that's being aimed towards Apple. When actually, it's more being aimed towards mobile phones in general. Because there are a couple of mobile phones that use older connections still. Um, like, my old Huawei that I had, even though 
USB Type-C has been out for like four years, it still had micro USB cables. So, um, it's more towards just the phone industry as a whole, that it means less waste. Sure, we might end up with a lot of lightning cables getting thrown away over the next few years. But if we get rid of them now and move into a more sustainable world where we only need one charger to charge everything, I'm all for it. Get it over and done with now. It should have been over and done with before Apple invented the lightning cable. Because to be honest, obviously Apple used that as an excuse to go against this but if Apple really had a problem with like being economical towards the planet and the wastage of throwing away all these cables then when type C came out they would have just moved to it straight away or even just not invented lightning in the first place because then there wouldn't be this problem and it wouldn't have gotten this big that now Apple is like well actually if we do this more than half of the world's cables are going to get thrown away you know but I think if everyone does end up getting rid of those cables well then actually everyone will start using the same stuff we won't have to it's more easier for us it means we only have one cable for everything so we don't need to make as many cables. It just makes more sense. Um, but another huge thing that bugs me about that law, uh, not about the law, about Apple and this entire situation, it, <laughs> you can recycle cables, but it makes more sense, like, most of the time they just end up melting it down to just make more cables out of it. Um, you can't really recycle the outer parts of the cable. And the chips that are in the cables can't really be recycled either. Um, yeah, a lot of people don't realise, but... Like, charger cables actually still have chips in them. To regulate, like, voltage and stuff like that. They have little chips in the end. That's why the U bit of the USB end is quite chunky. Yeah, I, I get what you mean, though. Um, but yeah, another reason why... Um, that entire situation bugs me is because Apple themselves use... Um, oh, fuck's sake. They used innovation. Like... They use the term that they're stifling. I think that's the word. They're basically slowing down innovation by forcing everyone to use the same cable. Um, while iPhone still currently has, I'll, I'll give Apple credit, when the lightning cable came out, it was a huge innovation because you had a cable that was reversible, didn't matter what way you put it in, it worked either way when it got plugged into the phone, and it was slightly faster than the old USB. It was slightly faster than micro USB, which had been out for a couple of years prior. It didn't suffer with the same problem that um, the old iPhone charger had, the really fat 30 pin charger had. And also the same problem that micro USB had, where those little prongs would bend and break and the cable would, wouldn't stay in the charge slot. So that problem didn't exist with the Lightning. So yeah, it was an innovator. For about two years till Type C came along. Type C came along, and that data speed became insane. Like 2015, you had cables that are capable of gigabit down a wire. It was USB 3.0. You could literally have high speed transfer between a phone and thingy. Like, I've obviously transferred to a newer phone. I've got a Wow, it's an old phone because my new one broke. So I transferred everything over, right? And I literally plugged in 
USB Type-C into the bottom of the note. Because I've got a Note 9 at the moment. And into the bottom of my new phone that's broken. And the transfer speed, it basically transferred like... 70 gigabytes of stuff. Just random apps. It basically copied my entire phone over in about 25 minutes. The entire phone got transferred in about 20 to 25 minutes. Which is mental. But iPhone has not innovated that cable at all. That is still a USB 2.0 connection. The new iPhone 14 that has lightning is still the same connection, USB 2.0, as the first lightning device. It has the same data transfer speed as an iPhone 5. It's got nine more numbers in it, for fuck's sake. Like, me personally, I understand that Pretty much the connector itself doesn't matter too much. Like, obviously, we went from having 30 pins to 8 pins on a charger, and it became so much better. The pins aren't the important part. It's the technology behind the connector. But Apple saying that in a, it's stifling innovation when the iPhone 14 literally can only transfer about 100 megabytes a second at the most... In terms of data. Sorry, not megabytes, megabits. It's like 100 megabits a second of transfer. Or well, it might be megabytes, I'm not sure. Anyways, the amount of data that it can transfer is so... Like, you can literally transfer a gigabyte every second over Type-C now. It's crazy. They've got like 20 gigabit, 30 gigabit, 50 gigabit coming over the next few years for type c that's planned they're starting to innovate on it now and then they're going to make it mainstream soon iphone have still been using pretty much the same architecture that they released in the iphone 5 like that's not innovation they haven't innovated in, on anything now the only reason i can think they're getting annoyed is because they were planning on making a new charger but then that also would go against their point of wastage because then everyone would need new cables anyways. So wouldn't it just make sense for everyone to go towards the new one that keeps getting changed every few years and keeps getting innovated in a good way while keeping the same connector? Or go down Apple's route of random shit? You know, it's weird. I don't understand Apple's logic half the time. It's almost like they don't understand how technology works. And English dictionaries, either. Because innovation means to make stuff better. And they haven't done that. <laughs> but yeah, that's like... The only thing I don't like about Apple is like... It just makes no sense. And the forced ecosystem is just shit. I've talked about this for three races, fuck me. Jesus Christ. Anyways, Mitsubishi fan playing Gran Turismo 2. Nice. How are you enjoying it, by the way? You enjoying it, or is it infuriating you like it infuriates me? <laughs> I, th I really don't like the old Gran Turismo 1 and 2. It just pisses me off. It's an odd game. Not bad. I think I made a good choice with this card, to be honest. Yeah, I'm not competitive, as you can tell. I just play shit to have fun and enjoy, so... I get much more enjoyment out of, like, enjoying a game and just having fun and not being competitive. Because as soon as I become competitive, it just fucking spoils the experience for me. That was terrible, though. 
Get the fuck out of the way, you prick! <laughs> See what I mean? It ruins the experience. Or adds comedic value. One or the other. Same, same. Ain't no worries, Wolfie. Got PS2, PS4, and Xbox 360. Nice. Uh, I'm obviously on my 360 at the moment. With the PS5 controller. Don't at me about it. I just prefer using a PlayStation controller. Because it's more comfortable. You big into American cars. I I appreciate them. I think they've got amazing sounding engines. But I, I'm not big into them. I'm not a fan of them. Just because... Americans and their racetracks and their cars are basically built for one thing and that's power. So you go around an American track. A lot of the time it is like a lot of straights. And it's just straight, brake, turn straight break turn there's no actual like variety in terms of the corners they are all pretty similar it relies on long straights heavy braking zones and corners um and obviously the only cars that are the most efficient at that are american cars so american cars are good for american tracks shit for anything else and european cars are good on european and japanese and all that same with Japanese cars as well. Japanese are the same. But are shit on American tracks. Because they just don't suit that style of circuit. Um, and obviously Americans, their... Their mentality when it comes to stuff is throw more of it at it. Here we have a car. Put more power in it. Here we've got an explosion, a controlled detonation of a building. Put more TNT in it. Blow it up to smithereens. You know, it's, uh, the American way is to put more of something towards it. So. But the one thing is, like, it, it's always one-sided, and they never think of the other side of, the, like, the situation. So, you put more power into a car... You've got to put more into other areas to make that still perform better. Just by putting more power, yeah, you might get more straight line speed, but your handling ability is still going to be fucking atrocious. And then you put more effort into your chassis... Cha can't even speak. Chassis department of whatever. So, you've obviously got to focus on that as well. Um, obviously, American companies, they don't. And you end up with these muscly cars that are really good on straights if you're going in a straight line. But as soon as you want to, you know, use that thing in front of you called the steering wheel, you're fucked. <laughs> it's just such a... It's so bad. But again, obviously Americans basically make drag racing as popular as it is. And I suppose when it comes to drag racing and listening to, like, these engines, it is good. The Americans do it really well. 
And obviously with the American mentality, it works there. Because throw more power at it, you're going to get a faster car. Give it big tires and put more horsepower. I want 1,000 horsepower in this beast. If I screw that, I make it 2,000 horsepower. My American accent is fucking trash. <laughs> it's like always some redneck hillbilly. <laughs> oh my god. Yes, I know. Holy shit. <laughs> it's such a terrible, terrible accent. Yes, I know. V10 F1 car in a set of calls say equals death. <laughs> Honestly, like, a set of calls is killer. It's such a good simulator, but the only... I've got a huge problem with... Games that require modding... To be good. I'm not a fan of modding games, because... It's constant trial and error. No game has made modding easy. And not easy, but like... Accessible. Like, you know when you get a DLC for a game... You buy it. You install it. It works. Um... I appreciate it, Mitsubishi fan. Uh, Mi Mitsubishi fan. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully, we see you again soon. And thank you for joining the stream. Uh, yeah, when it comes to, like, getting DLC for a game, which is like a mod, but you pay for it, it just installs and works. As soon as you start working with mods, even though they're free, and you've got loads of people doing it, the quality of mods are different, some are high quality, some are lower quality. So the quality isn't uniform to the game that you're playing. Uh, then along with that, you then have the hassle of trying to install them. If something doesn't work, you've got to troubleshoot it. It's such a hassle. And no game that I've seen does it in such a way that it is, hasn't been a hassle. Like, even when I it came to me installing one mod so I could play VR Minecraft where I could it, I was trying to install uh, Vivecraft um, I think that's what it's called or it might be called something else but it was basically VR Minecraft it was one mod it was an absolute pain in the ass to install one mod even when it comes to Seto Corsa Competizione I haven't modded that. I mean, uh, normal Assetto Corsa. Even though there's Content Manager, which is so much better than just not using Content Manager. It's still a pain in the ass to do modding for that. Some of the stuff, it just looks absolutely half ass. It's just, it's not an enjoyable experience. No one has actually done a game where mods have been good. That's why when you... I, I'm going to use an example. There's a game that I got recently. It was 50 pence on Humble Bundle. Um, because I just wanted to try it out. And if I didn't like it, I didn't have to play it. It was Train Simulator Classic. Turns out, I didn't really like it too much. Wasn't a great fan of it. But there was like 2,000 DLC for the game. There was so much DLC... Which basically made it look like it was a mod menu. There was just loads of, like, not a mod menu, but, like, there was a list of mods, almost. But each one, you buy it, it fucking works with the game. Obviously, it would be expensive if you bought them all. But you could go in, say, oh, I want to use this train or go on this route. You buy it, you play it. It just works. Now, there were some free options there as well. But then when it comes to like a set of course of modding, not everything is free there either. Some of them you do pay for. Like, I just hate modding games. So bad. Hate it. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.